pray that the Holy Spirit of God leads us this day into all truth and understanding. I pray that we are granted wisdom and discernment and truth. Glory to God in the highest, for he alone is worthy of praise. I was asked by somebody who I love and respect very much. That if I believed that only the ordained of the Lord could baptize people. And what I believe is, in my heart, from my spirit, that we are the Holy Spirit believers, that we as Holy Spirit filled believers are the kings and priests of our Lord and Savior. 1 Peter 2 and 9, our authority is given us as children of the Most High God. We are children of God, and if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, so that we have the authority to use the name of Jesus. John 14, 12 through 14. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these will he do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. This is the authority that we have been given to bring people into the kingdom. Matthew twenty-eight, eighteen through 20 And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. I believe that as a priest, we have access to the throne of grace through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 4 and 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 5, 1 through 4, for every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weakness. Because of this, he is required as for the people, so also for himself, to offer sacrifices for sin. And no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. So I believe that we have access to the control center of the throne of grace through Jesus Christ who made the way for us. That we may obtain compassion and find grace to help in the time of need. Grace teaches us that we don't have to do anything in order to ask Jesus into our hearts and our lives because grace meets us where we are. Grace was with me the day that I was messing around with a Ouija board. And when I was paralyzed and had sleep paralysis and I was hearing voices from our adversary mocking and telling me to surrender or worse yet would come, it was grace that brought to my mind to cry out to Jesus Christ. And when I did, I was released. And I thank God for being there for me in my time of need. It was the name of Jesus Christ that delivered me that day. It was him who came and broke the hold of the adversary that he had on me. And I thank God for his grace, which is renewed every day.
I believe that intercession is a ministry to bring people into the kingdom of God. When someone enters the kingdom, they become a royal police with access and authority. And then nothing or no one should ever come between them and God. But of course, we still pray for each other. This is our way of sharing each other's burdens. This is actually our way of lifting each other up. We turn our burdens over to Christ, which helps unify us as Jesus Christ's body of believers. Galatians 6 and 2, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. When we come together as one, one body, led by Jesus Christ, who is the head of our body, we can do all things. It is the ultimate in spiritual warfare. It defeats Satan and his strongholds over people. And it binds all the power that the adversary and his forces come against us with. When we come in unity, we destroy strongholds. We destroy barriers. We bring down walls. Taking more territory and people into the kingdom of God. Intercession begins with us allowing the Holy Spirit to flow through us, which gives us compassion. It helps us see others through the eyes of Jesus Christ, his love for all. We then allow the Holy Spirit to pray through us and guide us as to what, what to pray for and on whose behalf we are praying for. True intercession is the Holy Spirit of God praying through you. True intercession is praying that the Father's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And surrendering to His will be done in His perfect timing. It is telling him you trust him, you trust his plan, that you don't have to know it, but you believe in him, and you know that his timing is perfect. The ministry of reconciliation, the reconciliation of man to God, Jesus Christ accomplished that with the ultimate sacrifice at the cross. Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So therefore, if anyone in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus and gave us the Ministry of Reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, and as though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Turn away from sin 
and turn back to God. That is repentance. To turn back to God. To turn away from sin. To walk that path. You can't do it on your own. God will meet you when you call out to him. He'll meet you wherever you are. He'll meet you in that dirty cesspool that he grabbed me out of. Greed in the world. Thinking I was a self-made man. Thinking all the things that I had, all the toys and all the monetary gifts were because of my hard work instead of his blessings. Yet still he came to me. And he called me. And he woke me up. And I know today that everything that I have, my most precious gifts, are my children, my spouse, my brothers and sisters, my brethren, and my parents. And I lay them all before him, my treasures on earth. Because I trust him with everything that I own that is worth anything. Material things can be replaced. It is our loved ones that we want to make sure are spending eternity with us in heaven. That is why we, he gives us a heart to intercede for them. All Everybody who thinks that they have spoken until they were blue in the face and their family doesn't want to hear it anymore. You have to trust you have to trust in his plan. All we do is plant the seed and tell him the, what he's done for us. How he met us. He didn't say, hey. When you get to 25% good, then I'll look at you. He didn't say that to us. He came to us as sinners came to me as a sinner. I was neck deep in sin. I was pride full and haughty. And I thought that I had it all. And he showed me how mistaken I was. I was about ready to lose my family. And I thank God for waking me up that day and letting me know that it was time to put my house in order. Both my physical house and my spiritual house. I know that there's nothing I can do to save anybody. Not even myself. It was done for us all on the cross at Calvary. Jesus Christ paid our debt in full. When we invite him into our heart, When we ask him to change us from corruptible to incorruptible, he takes us at whatever pace we need to go. Some are fast learners. Some are a little bit slower because they doubt. But he takes you. And he takes you as deep and as far as you want to go. He is a gentleman. When you spend time with him, 
in prayer. And then you haven't spoke to him for a while. You miss him. You miss him as your best friend, your confidant, your savior. But he's always there with you. He's there with us through it all. He will be with us in our time of need. I have a message from our sister Deborah Walden Fry. The devil knows who you are. Beloved, the devil knows who you are. Do not let this cause fear. No, dear one. Let this knowledge give you the confidence in the day of battle. For as he knows who I am, so he knows who I am in you. Oh yes, my child. He trembles at the sight of you. He is terrified that you will finally realize your royal heritage. He has been working to convince you that you are beaten in this life. He has tried to get you to fear and doubt and run away from him. But I have said that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I have given you my authority to tread upon the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Run to the battle, mighty warrior. You wear my armor of light that destroys the works of darkness. You are more than a conqueror through him who loves you. My word in your mouth is a glorious sword to cut off the head of the enemy. As I am, so are you in this world. Fear not. I have equipped you well, dear one. You carry my name. You are a child of the King. You are sealed with my Holy Spirit. I am in you, and you in me. And so, my warrior bride, be strong in the Lord and in the power of my might. And these signs shall follow you that believe. In my name you shall cast out devils, you shall speak with new tongues, and you shall take up serpents. And if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. You shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Be confident of this, my child. I am with you always, working with you, signs and wonders following you. Pursue, for surely you shall recover all. Acts 19 and 15. Eventually one of the evil spirits answered them, Jesus I know, and I know Paul, but you, who are you? Romans 13 and 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6, 10 through 11. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his power of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Romans 13 and 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Samuel 30 and 8. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Glory to God in the highest, for he is worthy of all praise. He has been working mightily in my life. And when I ask him questions that I don't have the answer to, he leads me in the right direction. I follow him with my whole heart, mind, soul, and spirit. I trust in him. With everything. 
And I thank him for all that we have. I thank him for my brethren. I thank him for my family, for my parents, for my loved ones, and for my brothers and sisters. I thank him for continually showing me that his arm is not too short to reach me. And his timing is perfect. I pray the blood of Jesus over any and all who are led to listen to this audio message. In Jesus Christ's most holy, holy name. I pray the holy fire hedge of protection from the throne room of Father God round about you on all sides, above you and below you. I pray he covers you with the same hedge of protection he had around Job and his family. I pray he covers your places of work and worship. I pray he covers your vehicles and your homes. I pray that he covers your pets and provisions. And I pray that he covers your children, their schools, and all their activities. In Jesus Christ's most holy, holy, holy name. As with every word, go into your prayer closets and seek confirmation from the Holy Spirit of God and trust in no man and in no woman but only in Jesus Christ, our risen King and Savior. Only, on, only to Him. In your times of trouble, call out to Him, and He will answer. Glory to God in the highest, for He alone is worthy of praise. Glory to our risen King and Savior. May the peace of Jesus be over you in your homes. In Jesus Christ's most holy, holy, holy name. Amen and amen.